We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Don't forget the free podcast at InfoWars.com right there in the top left-hand corner. It says, listen, page. Free podcast, free archives, all there. And I know most of you know about the free podcast, 165,000 of you downloading it for free every day. How about you tell your friends, your family, your neighbors about the free podcast? Because that's the way people listen to radio now. That's the future. And that's uh, So they listen how they want, when they want, where they want. So subscribe to the free podcast at InfoWars.com. Your calls are coming up. But I wanted to just finish up with this thought dealing with government-sponsored terrorism. It is a public secret in academia. It is a public secret in the foreign service. It is an open secret in intelligence. It is an open secret in the military. I didn't know this till this weekend, but it's an open secret to Milton Friedman. In books he wrote. I knew about his economic view, but never read any of his books and had a chance to look at a book that quoted one of his books and then to actually get one of his books yesterday where he talks about how you have nine months to stage crises as a president or as a leader to get your agenda through. And I always wondered why the establishment had that nine-month rule. I, I knew about the nine-month rule. We pointed out that Bush uh, staged the 9-11 events, or his handlers did, in conjunction uh, with uh, being in office about eight and a half months, He was in office from January 21st, and then, of course, 9-11 happened roughly eight and a half months later. You can already see that with USA Today reporting that Obama has the lowest approval rating ever recorded. Now, now you would think that should be the headline. But see, USA Today can't talk about their dear Obama that way and so they just have a boring headline I'm gonna get to that later after we take some phone calls but it uh, shows that uh, the last guy who had an approval rating that dropped as fast as Obama was Jimmy Carter and Obama is dropping faster than Jimmy Carter now what did uh, Webster Tarpley say in the Obama deception and what has he said on this show over and over in the last uh, nine, ten months since Obama was president-elect. What has he said? He has said over and over again that we want his, his presidency to go like Jimmy Carter's. We want to immediately shoot him down that the first hundred to three hundred days in office he, that he was going to bomb rush us. We're now halfway through that and he is stalling. He is falling like a rock. This is fabulous news. But as sure as I am living and breathing, just as sure as you are living and breathing, they are going to stage crises, probably hot crises, military crises, stage terror crises. It'd be better if they just staged a terror crisis. I mean, I mean, it's sad if they kill a few thousand Americans, and I hope they don't do it, but it's better than launching an attack on Iran because that can get out of control and turn into a war with Russia or China. So I hope the globalists, if they do, I know they're listening. Uh, can you guys just kill a few thousand people? I mean, I know that's bad enough that you murder us, but it's like the foster kids you take and radiate to death or the black men in syphilis or the atomic soldiers or Project Shad nerve gassing our own troops to death. I mean, at least it doesn't get the Ruskies involved or the Chai Coms. Uh, I mean, if you got to kill somebody, I guess kill us like you always do. And a bunch of idiots will all go hug your leg and kiss your knee and worship you. And it'll, I'll have to throw up repeatedly watching everybody worship the murderers. But uh, I don't know what Cheney was trying with that sneak attack on Russian-held territories in South Ossetia and Abkhazia on 888. But, boy, that was dangerous, wasn't it? Now we've got U.S. forces and NATO forces and Israeli forces massing again in Georgia. We've got uh, U.S. and NATO forces massing in Afghanistan and Pakistan. All sorts of encirclement and provocations going on. The economic crisis is only deepening. 
27 point, 23.7, 23.7 trillion stolen. That's all coming up as well in the next hour. Uh, that crisis is deepening. Are they going to stage domestic terror? I've seen a lot of preparations to quit playing the Muslim turban head uh, card, though that is up the sleeve. Economic crisis sleeve, bio attack sleeve, chemical attack sleeve, hyped flu sleeve card, or real bio attack flu card. Or they could have the good old boy militia card, blow up a federal building. I mean, I hope the feds don't bomb a federal building and kill a few hundred of their of their minions. But uh, that, if, if that's what it takes to get their people to circle the wagons against the U.S. population, if they got to punch their own minions in the nose to get them hyped up to like a, it's like beating a dog in the head with a two-by-four and turning it loose on somebody, that is better than attacking Iran. That'll kill a lot more of the federal, federal, federal puppies. Yeah, I think that's in the cards too. Killing some, killing some of their babies. Killing some of their larvae. They like that. They like killing their own uh, minions. It gets their minions all hopped up and angry and crying and feeling sorry for themselves. And you know, the larvae really don't care. If deep down they know their bosses bombed them, it's too much fun to squeeze the American people by the throat and feel powerful like stupid jackasses. You sure loved Clinton after he blew you sky high at OKC, didn't you? So as sure as the sun came up this morning and as sure as it's going to set this evening, just as sure as there's fish in the sea, you can bet they're going to pull some big, fat, Crisis. So I want to hear from you, the listeners, what you think those are going to be. All right, I've said enough. Let's go to your phone calls. Tony in Illinois, you're on the air worldwide. Hey, how you doing today, Alex? Good, sir. Hey, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I was, uh, I got, when I moved, I just moved to a new apartment, and I come across a uh, document that a friend of mine had gave me back in uh, 99. Just this big, long list of every potential type of uh you know, terrorist weapon, uh, Blink and Iran, amazingly, all the way back in 99, talking about Iran and, uh, you know, the backpack nuke scenario, this, that, and the other. Uh, it was interesting reading, to be sure, uh, but I can't find the cover sheet. It came off at some point uh, in the last, you know, 10 years, and without a cover sheet, I realize it's kind of useless. But uh, so I'll tell you about that. And, you know, yeah, no, there's the hundreds of those reports, and don't think that we have them all. Make copies, send them to us. But I have probably seen, oh, it's got to be more than 100 reports that are federal. I've seen a couple hundred more state reports. We don't cover them a lot, though I've learned that we should because each time it gets news attention because so many times it's a carbon copy of another state just with the heading changed. But they say wearing blue jeans, talking on cell phones, having a baby carriage with a baby. Uh, it says watch priests, watch pastors, watch veterans. Watch people in military uniform. Don't trust anyone. Everyone's basically a terrorist. Don't trust gun owners. Don't trust people with anti-UN stickers. Don't trust people with NRA stickers. And then I have inside the LAPD from the Discovery Channel from like 1998 where this veteran, this World War II vet, no, he was a Korean War vet, had died of a heart attack. He was found dead three days later by his neighbors. They wondered where he was. They go in, he's dead on the floor. The cops come in, make fun of his dead body, make fun of his medals and stuff. And then they come outside and make fun of his Bronco with an NRA sticker. And then they openly steal his guns and brag, I'm taking this one, I'm taking that one. And, and I mean, they're so criminal, they think it's normal to steal his guns on camera. But And then to talk about how, make fun of his dead, stinking body and talk about how he's scum because he owns guns. Well, you know me, Alex. I'm up here in uh up up there in Airstrip too, or AK Chicago. So you know that uh corrupt cops are just you know it's the norm around here, and they're already pulling terror stuff up here. I mean, I lived here for six years. I'm not from here originally, but I lived here for about six, about five, six years, and uh, I know the patterns of the uh, murder up here. Usually, it's the first warm uh, weekend uh, of the spring. 
uh, it's usually a, a big grip of murders, and then after that, it just it's back to whatever. But it just seems lately, it's just and as the gangbangers all kill each other, then they want to disarm more of the citizens, which makes every gangbanger and crook in the country move to Chicago, the happy hunting land of disarmed slaves. Oh, absolutely, it, and, and it, they really are. People here are terrified of a gun. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter <laughs> what they're terrified of what it is to be an American. Absolutely. My my boy's uh, 11 years old. He just took his first hunt shooting lessons. He's been raised here all his life, you know. But, I mean, he ain't afraid of his gun, but his mother is, his dad is. It's just really, you know, uh, I'm well, not. Well, the deal is we've got we've to take the culture back, and that's what's so good about Front Sight and Appleseed and all the other groups. Everywhere, our Second Amendment culture is winning. I appreciate your call. I mean, I can be out in Hollywood with former Hollywood liberals, and they're all pro-Second Amendment now. I can be at a beatnik coffee shop and they're pro-Second Amendment.